Here we go. It's a DC Sports Huddle. We have a full house. It's Rob Woodfork, Dave Preston, George Wallace, and Ben Raby. Yes, I did do that moving left to right. It's a play-by-play habit, or maybe it's right to left. It's one of the two. But anyway, it's the MGM uh, National Harbor that brings you the DC Sports Huddle. For the latest in Washington sports, visit MGM National Harbor to experience a sports fan's paradise. You'd think I'd memorize that by now, but I always want to look at my script to make sure I got it right. On the script today, we're going to talk about the the Cavs. What's going on? Everybody everybody gets hurt in hockey, but this could be serious stuff. Uh, Wizards, yeah, we've got the 10th overall selection. That's no surprise. And they will give the picks for the PGA uh, Championship, which is about to get going. Ben Raby, start with you. Uh, this Caps offseason, I don't know how to figure it out because I think they have some tough decisions to make. Yeah, they do. And I think the biggest, uh, among the biggest concerns will be the health of Tom Wilson and perhaps most notably Nicholas Backstrom, who played through a lingering hip issue, a real serious hip issue last season, never quite looked himself. He acknowledged he never quite felt himself and decisions to be made this offseason. Now, does Nicholas Backstrom undergo surgery or are there going to be other things that they look at regarding Nicholas Backstrom and his future with the team? So such a key cog there, a big salary cap hit as well. Be interesting to see how that plays out. Tom Wilson, the thought is he will undergo surgery. That's the thought. And he should be good to go for the start of the season. And then personnel-wise, the big storyline as well, what do you do in goal? I think there's an appetite to add a veteran in goal. Ilya Samsonov, Vitek Vanacek, the two young guys, two years in a row. They've been good. They haven't been great for a team like the Capitals with expectations of going deep. you got to get better in the most important position. I think personnel-wise, that will be the most important decision. What do you do in goal? You but, just outlined yeah. what we should provide aspirin to the uh, Capitals front office. So let's go right down the list. Uh, is it time to rebuild? We understand why you keep this group together, win it in 2018. Why not run it back in 2019? That didn't happen, and we know the rest of the history. So are we in a rebuild now? Ben Rabia will go right down the line real quick. Are we in a I rebuild? I don't think so. I think it's still premature to do that. You have too many core players who showed themselves well who are signed for long-term deals that would be hard to move, no move clause, no trade clauses, et cetera rebuild that might be easier said than done this is still a 100 point team from this past season but right. i don't think you need to blow it up just yet no george i agree with ben i mean you know if, if ben says so i'm gonna agree with him i mean i think you know and again Careful. anytime you have an alex ovechkin on this team of backstrom this guy you know we keep hearing about the core group with this capitals team for years and years uh you know i you still think they have a shot to do it if they can still you know plug pieces here and there and think that this group can make another run at it, you keep it together as long as you can. I mean, if the goaltending is the big question, I heard Peter Laviolette saying goaltending is not the reason they lost this series, but Ryan McKellen saying he wants a goaltender. Uh, you know, if there are certain pieces that this team needs to keep it together and keep going, I say you keep doing that as long as Alex Govechkin is scoring goals at the pace that he is doing so. It's kind of hard to go into Ovi and say, look, we're tearing this thing down and uh, we're going to start all over. And by the way, you got to stick around for a rebuild. I just don't see it happening. No, no, and I only ask the question because the definition of insanity he was doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It does seem yeah. like I'm stuck in a cul-de-sac. Dave Preston. Uh, I think they I don't think you blow it up. I think the core, although they are older, I although this is an older roster, especially when you look at the rest of the league, I think there are still productive pieces uh, on this team. TJ Oshie's got to get healthy this offseason. Uh, no matter what happens with Nicholas Baxter, does he come back? Is he back for half a season? Is he able to be ready for day one? Same case with uh, you know Tom Wilson. How soon will he be you know, 100%? Uh, there are a lot of question marks there, but I think the underlining question marks too, uh, they have to maybe figure out and maybe uh, fix the, the, their, their defensive pairings. Uh, you know, when you look at the team right before Barry Trotz got here, it felt like there was a, a conveyor belt between here and Hershey. They were constantly bringing in defensemen. They need to solidify the deep pairs, uh, not just productive guys, you know, goal scorers, but guys who can really lock things down. Goal uh, Goaltending, again, was something that we've mentioned early and often. I think this year they had two dimes. You need a quarter back in there on goal. And uh, they had, you know, they need a guy as opposed to two almost guys. And lastly, I think if this team is going to be good, if they're going to hold the core together, which they, I think they should for another potential run, they need some minor leaguers to come up from Hershey and not just play, not just get ice time, but develop and, and produce major minutes. So there, there are a lot of ifs and buts, but you're, I think you've already crossed the bridge from do we reboot and have a contender before Ovi retires. If, if they were to reboot, 
in what we've talked about blowing things up, they should have done it two years ago when they brought in the new head coach. They've already crossed the Rubicon, so to speak, and they've got to rebuild on the fly for the rest of Obi's career. Rob Woodfork. Uh, first of all, I would love to have two dimes. 20-something Rob would have loved to have had two dimes. I think that means something different than what Dave was saying. But uh, I, I, I think Let's they have – Let's keep it clean. Let's I keep it they, clean. <laughs> I, think they have to, uh, I think they have to keep it together for a lot of the reasons that Ben said. But also, and at the risk of sounding like Dave Preston, I'm going to use an analogy here. This is kind of like the sell-by <laughs> date on the milk carton. There are two kinds of people in the world. There's people who throw it out the minute that sell-by date happens. And then there's people who understand that a sell-by date doesn't apply once it's already in your fridge. Once it's open, you got a couple days after that before it goes bad. Same thing here with the Capitals. They still, I mean, I, I mean, it feels like they were worse this season because they were an eight seed and they were starting the playoff series on the road for the first time in forever. If you look at the wins, if you look at the points in the standings, it's pretty similar to what they were when they won the Stanley Cup a few years ago. So I think the cover, I mean, like you guys were saying, the cover's not bare. They still have enough, uh, it, and really from a marketing standpoint too, you're not going to be able to sell the fan base on, on uh, Alex Ovechkin getting traded away and breaking all these records in somebody else's uniform. So they're oh. going to ride out the OV era as far as they can and – you know, and I don't think it's wrong. I, I I don't think there's a wrong answer either way, but I think they're going to go with keeping it together. Well, hey, ben, because I, uh, ben, are they changing? The, are they going to change the coach, Ben? Entering his final year, it'll be interesting to see if he is Very a quote unquote tough. lame duck. It worked okay two coaches ago for that trots fell in his final year before uh, a contract was set to expire. But uh, yeah, worth keeping tabs on Peter Laviolette entering the final year of his deal. And and, and real quick to piggyback off Rob what was referencing with Ovechkin, the fact that Ovechkin is still producing fellas at the yeah. rate that he, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's He's about two, that, three years. Yeah. That's why you need to continue to keep the window open. And similarly, a big season from Evgeny Kuznetsov this year, if he can follow that up and maintain the level that he was at, there are ingredients that would suggest you've got something there that you could continue to ride uh, despite the premature playoff exit this past season. But also, but also real quick, uh, I don't think the question is whether or not Ovi has enough left in the tank. It's whether the supporting cast around him does. He's a generational talent. He's a freak of nature. You wonder if Tom Wilson will, will, will be able to uh, hold up. You wonder if Backstrom will be able to hold up. Those are the guys that I would be more worried about than I would be Ovi. Yeah, yeah, no, we agree. I'm, I'm, saying, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying with yeah. Ovi, to your point, yeah. you have to surround right. it. Don't right. don't break it down. You have to continue to load up and, and go for it if he continues to, to produce at the rate that he somehow ridiculously does all these years into his career. <laughs> yeah, no, continue to, to ride is, is good health. And look, all sports, you're just one injury away from what we're discussing changing. But because I'm pig, uh, pig headed and stubborn, I'm going to say what I said 13, 14 years ago when he ever signed that big 13 year contract, that there's more than one Stanley Cup in Alex Ovechkin, so I'm not going to stay away from that because I am that hard-headed and stubborn. But it is concerning that they are not advancing past the first round with the caveat that clearly the Stanley Cup playoffs are the most difficult playoffs in all of uh, professional sports when a series is involved uh, because and a, puck, a puck bounce here, uh, a fluke uh, situation here, and suddenly you're home for the summer. And I hate to chime in on, on this, guys, because I'm pretty sure we discussed this quite a bit last week. You couldn't underscore enough the losing of Tom Wilson after 91 seconds in this series. And I think Alan may, may on uh, NBC Sports Washington may have even to the point that it's like losing three guys. You lost the big guy that, you know, the hitter, you lost the guy who uh, had career highs and goals and assists and you lost the special teams guy. And I think, you know, it, it, I, I think you can write the six. I think this uh, organization and team can hold its head high, even though they did blow leads in games four, five, and six, even though they had a chance to go three, one and wound up losing that game. And, uh, you know, wound up losing uh, the series in overtime in game six, they can hold their head high, taking the top seed to six games, despite perhaps, you know, their X factor, you know, he's uh, Tom Wilson's not their best player, but he did so many things for this team and to lose him for all but 91 seconds in this series was absolutely crippling. The fact that they got it to six games is an achievement in and of itself. 
And also, okay. real quick, Ben, because I feel like we have to touch on this since these guys are available. You have Barry Trotz out there. You have um, uh, uh, Braden Holtby uh, uh, expected to be available in free agency. I mean, if you're going to get the band back together, get the band back together, right? I mean, is that even realistic? <laughs> I'm not necessarily so sure that the first name you brought up is rushing back to these parts. I think Barry Trotz will have a lot of options, a lot of opportunities that he could potentially pursue elsewhere in the league. And Braden Holpe is an interesting name just because of the fact, aside from his history here, he fits the description. He does fit the description of what they are in the market for, that being a veteran goaltender who could potentially split the workload with a younger goalie. He does have a prior relationship with Ilya Samsonov. I'm not sure that he would necessarily again be rushing back to work with someone he previously worked with, who they essentially said, we're going to move forward instead of you. But that type of goaltender is certainly uh, what they're in the market for. And we'll see uh, We'll see if Braden is, is in the market for a new home. It would be his fourth home in as many years if he does move on from Dallas. Uh, maybe the familiarity in these parts would be enticing for him. And that's the thing. That's all the goaltenders who are available are all 30-something guys. So, I mean, he uh, of those options, he might be – he's the most familiar, obviously, but he might also be the best option out of the ones that are available. Yeah, should, should mention as well, regarding free agency – they need a veteran goaltender. The free agent pool is thin. So folks should temper their expectations, keeping that in mind. It might be best acquired via a trade, which brings on a whole other list of possibilities. But the free agent pool for a veteran goaltender this summer, especially, is, is pretty thin. But Holpe is a part of that group. Yes. Timing is everything in life, somebody said. And uh, uh, timing is not good for me. I've got a DC United game to get to. But we'll just start with the Wizards uh, conversation. The Wizards' 10th overall pick. Uh, they don't seem to have the draft lottery luck that the Orlando Magic have, who have the fourth time uh, number one overall pick. I'll say this. The Wizards, uh, with the 10th overall pick, and we discussed it this morning on my show on WTOP, Jalen Duran would be my selection. They decide to go big if he's still available. And, and this kid, Dyson Daniels, 19-year-old, uh, six, eight uh, defensive skills that, that played in the G league ignite. That would be my selection also at, at the 10th overall pick. If you, if you decide to go small, I do know that having been in a draft war room, it's, it's not necessarily position based. It's best available player. If you talked about position, yes, the wizards need a point guard. This is not a point guard draft and the wizards are not going to acquire a point guard in this draft. This Wizards team going forward, Kristaps Porzingis, one of six players, averaged at least 20 points, eight rebounds, and at least one block in the companies of LeBron James and Giannis, et cetera. So the key for the Wizards next season, Beal comes back, which he will. Kristaps Porzingis stays healthy, and this can be a competitive team. They've got a core group and some young players that are really starting to develop. I saw one draft uh, scouting analysis say, well, Corey Kispert's yet to make an impact in the league. He's a rookie who's playing Bradley Beal's position. He wasn't even supposed to play much this season and yet started 29 games and forget what he did shooting, which he can shoot, but it's his, his feel for the game of basketball, his acumen, whatever you want to call it, his movement off the ball. He is going to have a strong NBA career. Denny Obdia figured out the defense in the NBA first. <laughs> first. Now he's being aggressive and he likes contact on offense. Uh, and Rui Hachimura, I still think we're, we now will see if he gets a full season, a full training camp. Uh, this this year, uh, he came on late and nobody expected him to shoot as well as he did from three-point distance. But the fact that that is now part of his arsenal means the Wizards do have a core group of young players. Beal, Porzingis come back. The Wizards have a chance to be competitive next season. Guys, I'll let you sort it out because you'll probably say something that will make me mad. And it's just as well that I have to leave. Enjoy the rest <laughs> of the D.C. Sports Huddle. We wouldn't do that to you. All right. On that note, actually, actually we would. Now we can actually, yeah, maybe we I'm would fully right. trash talk the Wizards. I'm just going to insert mine, guys. I, I think uh, Ty Ty Washington is the pick at 10 for two reasons. Number one, His name. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah. Who doesn't want a guy with Washington on the front of the jersey and the back of the jersey? <laughs> I was talking about Ty. <laughs> I like. You can't buy anywhere. Second of all, they do need a point guard. And yes, yeah. it's not a point guard rich draft, but it is a draft in which you can get the best point guard with that 10th overall pick. So if Ty Ty Washington is on the board there at 10, that would be my selection, barring something unforeseen where one of the studs ends up sliding, which in the NFL all the time, that doesn't really happen in the right. NBA. Um, the Dyson Daniel kid, that's, that's kind of an intriguing thing. I mean, you know, 
Right. Six six may not be it may not start right away, but could be something they could work with. I mean, it, look, it's way too early to kind of even talk about names and and things like that. But they do need a, they do need a point guard. I mean, they do. I mean, that's just the bottom I, line. And so. I think and I think much like the Commanders who chose eleventh before trading down. Uh, the Wizards are going to get whomever is not, whoever doesn't get picked, you know, because there's going to be somebody who's going to slip to 10, who maybe should have gone seventh or eighth or something along those lines. So this is more of a reactive draft and they're going to go for quote unquote, the best player available because even, you know, even though they're, you know, they made the play in round last year, this is still a team that has missed the postseason more often than not the last couple of years. They, this, Upcoming year should be a big year for this team because this is the fifth straight year that the Wizards have had a top 15 pick. And we're not saying that you're getting all-stars with these top 15 selections, but there needs to be proof that there is a core that can contend for a playoff berth, that can have a winning record. I mean, this is a franchise that hasn't had 50 wins in over 40 years. So uh, let's let's see how this team comes together with hopefully a healthy, uh, healthy Bradley Beal and I don't expect whoever they pick at 10th to be of any impact this upcoming year. I expect them to get maybe a project who learns, you know, slowly, but hopefully surely for the Wiz. Wow. Yeah, well, wins familiar. That sounds like literally everybody they pick since Beatles. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I have, I have low expectations and <laughs> I know they're going to find a way under that. I was going to say, you know what wins, you don't necessarily draft this at 10th overall in the NBA, but team defense needs, Tremendous growth needs big yeah. time improvement. And again, when you think about a 10th overall pick, if you're looking for somebody who could contribute, who could score, who could provide you good minutes down the line, but golly, whether it's through the draft or maybe more importantly through free agency, boy, oh boy, do they need to load up on, on that side of the ball. And in terms of those responsibilities and you look at the teams in the postseason and how it got away from the wizards in the regular season, ultimately a combination of reasons but uh, certainly among the priorities for Tommy Shepard this offseason. No, I don't know about you guys. I'm just curious to see how Orlando's going to mess up the number one pick again. That's just me. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Now, stranger that, things that, have that's happened. The one thing they do well is the number one overall pick, Shaq. Uh, well, it wasn't Penny, it was Chris Weber that turned into Penny. But then uh, Dwight Howard. They might okay. have they might have a future Hall of Famer. Okay, it's the fourth time they've gotten it, but they keep they keep ending up with this. They're not doing they're not doing and something right. Higher there, yeah, they never stay. <laughs> they're once a decade allotment here. On well, the nineties, yeah. I guess it was two, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but uh, yeah, I I I mean, I, I guess you can't just trade the tenth overall pick for like uh, Chris Paul or something like that. <clears throat> that would be that would be a terrible. Terrible no, move. not if Patrick Beverly, not if Patrick Beverly is making the. Uh, <laughs> that was just straight up slander. I mean, just imagine. Just I mean, the level of pettiness that you go, you wake up at four thirty in the morning, go on national TV so that you can badmouth your. Uh, yeah. Your. Uh, yeah. Your, your great adversary on the worst day of his life. That's just stay classy, San Diego. Unbelievable, unbelievable stuff. All right, PGA Championship this weekend. Um, I'm taking Tiger Woods because that's just what I always do for every golf tournament. And so, uh, I'm closer to right than I was for the masters <laughs> because his leg is healthier. And he talked quite a bit about that the other day. So I'm taking Tiger. I know he's a, uh, you know, sort of a higher odds, um, ticket at this point, but I wouldn't bet against him. Uh, Dave Never. Preston did an entire preview on the PGA Championship on WTOP.com. Who you got, Dave? Well, for the next 10 minutes, I'll just – no, no, I won't. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Can you read it to us? <laughs> yeah, I wish I could. Uh, it's, it's it, it would take longer than 10 minutes to read. Yes. Uh, I think what's going to be an obstacle for Tiger uh, this week is just the fact that the field is much stronger from top to bottom than the Masters, which is an invitational, and you do have the bottom feeders like – Sandy Lyle's not going to be winning the Masters anytime soon. There are a lot of former champions. This is perhaps, you, you, could, you could argue that either this or the U.S. Open, the strongest field. I'm going to go with the PGA as the strongest field of the four majors, even though it doesn't get the respect of the others. So it's he, Tiger could play better than he did at the Masters, yet still not fair as well, so to speak. And it's going to be interesting to see how well he does over the weekend. He shot back-to-back -back 78s. He looked a little mentally and physically uh, fatigued after playing, you know, competitive golf for the first time in a long time. I, I know better than to bet against Tiger, but I just know that he's going to face quite a few obstacles. People that I'm going to have my eye on this week, Jordan Spieth, 
Uh, he has yet to win the PGA. It's the one major that he has not won yet. He has a chance to complete the career grand slam. Another guy, number two on the money list, Cameron Smith. I believe he won the Players Championship, uh, so which is the, the fifth major, kind of like the George Martin Pete Best to the Ringo star that is the PGA Championship, if you will. Got my eye on him. Another guy, I had a chance to see Max Homa uh, compete and play very well at a uh, just a rain-swept uh, Wells Fargo Championship earlier this month. He could be a first-time winner. Very often you see a guy win the PGA and it's his first you know, major championship. Often it's the only major championship for some of these guys. But I think Max Home is going to be my long-shot wild card this uh, weekend at Southern Hills. Every time Dave makes a reference that makes me wonder, what do you think our target demographic is? Then I remember he's not as he's not as young as he looks. That that's that's what a, that that was what I was thinking the entire time just then. You know what? I'm gonna before <laughs> before my three fifteen. I know that you guys are gonna talk PGA as well. My, at the line of scrimmage this huddle. Huge week for lacrosse for the Maryland men and women. The women take on Florida at noon on Thursday. The men match up with uh, Virginia. The last team that beat them, the team that beat them in the national championship game last year, that Sunday, a chance for both the Terrapin men and the Terrapin women to get to the final four. I'm going to be watching. All right. That's that's quite and, the walk off there. That's a good walk. And he's going to be coming after you with those smart ass remarks you made about hey, him. Look, this is what I do. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to liven this huddle up, man. OK, nobody wow. cared about the Washington football team last year until dudes were swinging on each other on the bench in prime time. OK, I'm getting Who, whose bench was that now? Which logo was on that bench? Oh, that yeah. was their bench. That was their bench in enemy territory. <laughs> oh right <laughs> i was, wasn't i was i was wondering where he was going with that i was like wait a minute he's a duke fan so does that mean he's automatically a cowboys fan cowboys oh, no, the, definitely uh, oh, no, yeah, no. yeah 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 uh who do you got ben in the uh PGA championship just throwing out a name john rom four top 10 finishes in the majors last year he's always in contention not an overly original pick but john rom a major champion a year ago at the u.s open let's give him his first pga coming up this weekend I apologize if I'm taking George's thunder here, but I have yet to hear any of you guys say Rory McIlroy. That's my runner up. If uh, Tiger doesn't do it. You haven't even given me a chance to speak yet. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm not going to say Rory. <laughs> <laughs> Just did. <laughs> uh, look, Rory, Rory could be, I mean, he played well uh, at the masters. Also played well here in DC a little bit a while ago. Look, Scotty Scheffler always is, is playing some really good golf as number one, but I'm, I'm with you, man. Like anytime, Tigers in the field, just watching him in his presser yesterday. I mean, dude, just he said the Monday after the Masters was absolutely miserable, but he has gotten so much stronger since then. And you just know just the competitive nature of the guy. Just, 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 he's just the work he has put in in the last month. I mean, is probably, you know, more than we're, we're all going to do in our, you know, however many years. But I mean, he, he seems like he's ready to go. And look, he's won at this course before, he knows the course. I'm not betting against him either. Anytime he's in, he's in the field, I'm a Tiger guy. And I, and, and I just want to see him – look, for him getting out there at the Masters, we saw how great it was just to complete a round. Then he goes out and makes the cut. He, he was he – was, uh, he was asked about, were you able to step back and just kind of appreciate what you were able to do and not only play but make the cut? And he, he's not – he's pretty pissed off that he didn't play well on the weekend. So that's like his mindset. And forget the fact that he's out there. Now he's proven he can do it. Now he wants to go out and win. So, uh, you know, Tiger's up there for me. But I also want to see Scotty. I mean, the way he's playing, he's playing pretty well, too. Uh, Scheffler, um, Jordan Speed, very upset that he didn't make the cut at the Masters, too. We'll see what he's been able to do in the last month. But it should be a fun weekend because, as you guys are mentioning, too, the field's pretty deep. So it should be fun. All right. I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully you guys uh, at home are looking forward to it. Uh, we are going to uh, sign off on this edition of the DC Sports Huddle, which of course is brought to you by MGM National Harbor. It's time to change the game at Bet MGM Sports. And I am Rob Woodfork, Dave Johnson, already off. He's the uh, busiest man in broadcast. So the fact that he even has time to do this show is extraordinary. And we appreciate his presence. Ben Raby, thanks for uh, hanging out uh, once again to talk uh, hockey with us. George Wallace, Dave Preston, who's probably going to swing on me as soon as I come off the elevator uh, when I arrive at the station, and for all the random people walking in the background of Dave's shots, we are signing off, breaking the huddle. <laughs>